All right, some of the things you're going to need is nylon. You're going to want to use nylon because it's uh, water resistant and doesn't mold. Use something like uh, a cotton, then the cotton will actually mold on you and break. And you don't want to use a uh, fishing line because it's too thin. It'll actually rip right through your plants. Now this is a one millimeter uh, thread. You can get one and a half millimeter too. Uh, it's right around $10 and this whole roll will do this just fine. You also need some elbows, the three-way elbows. And then uh, obviously your planks of PVC. Everything you can buy online on Amazon except for the PVC. So you want to pick that up at Harbor Freight or Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you got going around. Um, so we'll be using three quarter inch PVC here. So let's get to work. Some other things you're gonna need are PVC cutters. These are like about 10 bucks and they work a lot better than using a saw. Makes a lot less of a mess and they're also really quick. Marker for marking your spots, tape measure, and a drill. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut four pieces at eight foot, and those are gonna be buried two feet down below the surface. So it's gonna be basically six foot once we're all done burying it. And then it's gonna be two foot wide, and then we're gonna basically make two and connect them together. So now you got your four eight feet uh, cuts, you're going to go ahead and make uh, four four foot cuts. So we have four pieces at four foot, four pieces at eight foot, and now we need four pieces at two foot. So you're going to need these uh, elbows, comes in an 8 pack for about 15 bucks and you go ahead and just uh, connect uh, one piece to the 8 foot and make sure that they're all kind of facing each other. Alright, so this is what it looks like kind of all done. Now we have to drill some holes, which we're going to mark them out first, and then we're going to run our line. So again, we're going to have two feet that are going to be, it's going to be buried into the ground. So we want to measure for two feet, and then we'll put a line there so we know that that's going to be in the ground. That way we don't have to waste our time with uh, running wire on that part. Alright, now that we know where our two feet is at, we're going to run a... Uh, we're going to put a dot every four inches from there. That way, that's, that's where the screws are going to go. <laughs> so. <laughs> so let's put that in the video. That's awesome. All right, now that we know where our two foot is at, we're going to put a dot every four inches because we're going to have a four inch reach through. We're going to do that on each side. So uh, the going length this way and that way. And then we're gonna run screws and we're gonna use uh, one inch screws for uh, this project. All right, now that we have all the screws all done on all four sides, uh, you don't have to do the two feet that's gonna be buried even though your line's going to be buried. Uh, you don't need to run it because you're not going to be using it. So uh, the better way of doing it actually is making a cross beam here at the two foot. So you don't have to run all the way down, but we didn't do that. So cool. So anyway, there's two ways of doing this, running the line. You can either just run one piece at a time and cut off the access. But what we want to do is actually just kind of run back and forth 
one continuous line. That way, at the end of the year, we can actually just take it back off and put it back in the spindle, take all the PVC down, break it down, and uh, store it a lot better. Uh, you can do it either way, but if you're going to do it like how we're going to do it, don't um, tighten it too much because then your sides are going to bow in on you. And in order to fix that, it's going to be a lot of adjusting. Um, if you do it one at a time, then you know exactly where uh, you know your bowing is happening. Then you can just readjust that one line. So if you do it back and forth like we're about to do, just don't make it too tight. All right, now that we're all uh, done here with the, the trellis net, we're gonna do it on the other side and then go and install it. So when you go to run your twine, you kind of do a loop pattern like this. And it's gonna be a little bit um, loose, but that's fine, because once the cucumbers grow up, they're gonna be pulling down, so it's gonna actually kind of pull it and make it tighter as they grow up anyway. So this is just a good way of installing it and taking it back off at the end of the year. Again, if you're gonna run it one by one, it's kind of harder to take apart, so. But uh, if you do run across a couple loose wires, what you can just do is just kind of run it around your screw a couple of times like that, and that'll tighten it up for you usually. So sometimes the screw likes to turn, but um, you know, you can just do a figure eight pattern type thing and maybe even tie a knot to, to get a little bit tighter for you. So yeah, that's simple as that. We're gonna do the other side, then we're gonna show you how to install it and run some cucumbers up it. All right, now that we got our hole all uh, dug out, it's actually about 18 inches or so, not quite two feet. Didn't realize how far down two feet was. But um, you guys don't have to do this. This is just for extra uh, durability. You can stake them down, but I have really uh, loose dirt here, so I don't think stakes really would have did much justice. So if we were to get like a 30 to 40 mile an hour wind one day, the whole thing would be crashing down and all your plants would go with it. So that's basically why we're doing this. It's a little extra digging, you know, an extra 20 minutes of work uh, to uh, install and um, take out every year, but it's definitely worth the uh, risk. So if we uh, didn't do this again, there's a good chance it could crash down in a high wind and everything would be for naught. So this is how we're doing it. And uh, if you have any suggestions on how to do it better, always looking to um hear your suggestions in the comments so yeah let me know all right so we have the trellis nut all set up now and uh so we're gonna put on the right side our regular plants and on the left side we're gonna have plants that are treated with mycorrhizae as you can see it's a little bit leaning but that's okay uh, we didn't dig the back trench far enough down now we dug it about 18 inches we actually added another uh, layer at the bottom there uh of lines so that they can cl start climbing up early. Also over here, we have our two beds of peppers, not planted yet, but uh, this side of the flower is all gonna be regular, and then the left side is gonna be all treated with uh, mycorrhizae, so we can do like a side-by-side -side experiment. Get the same amount of sun, basically shines down throughout the whole day, and uh, goes down around five or six o'clock, hits our tree line, and eventually goes away. Um, but yeah, we have uh, that plant in the middle there is uh, uh, called columbine, I believe. It's a flower, so that'll be kind of our separation point. So we have 33 that are going to be untreated and 33 that will be treated. So let's get to work. All right, for soil medium, we're going to be using 50% pro mix and 50% compost. And we'll be using about a gallon to transplant for each of the plants. About that much right there and then uh, that should tide us over for at least the first three months and then towards the end of the season we'll have to bump up some uh, feeding some uh, phosphorus potassium so we're gonna go ahead and plant the first row with the mycorrhizae and then the second row without so what you're gonna want to do is fill up about three quarters of the way or so with the compost and your pro mix 
And go ahead and take a plant carefully. Kind of squeeze the edges. As you can see, all those roots are already starting to form. And you're going to take your mycorrhizae. Just very liberally, just kind of dump it all over the place. On all four sides. That should be enough right there. Take the rest, fill her in. All right, so uh, three hours later, and pretty much the rest of this energy. Uh, we are all done, and I believe it was, uh, let's see, 66, 80 something plants. But some of these actually have two or three to them, so well over 100 plants total. Should get a decent crop. But again, this whole side right here is all treated with mycorrhizae, including that one right there. And then this one, all the way down, are treated, or untreated. So there's 33 in each. So good test um, between 66 plants. Again, just strawberries and then cucumbers all set up and done. And again, that side is treated and this side is untreated. And it would go up to six feet total. So, be a fun experiment. Till next time, as always, guys, keep it green.